Enough! You're a good kid. Grab yourself a bundle out of the wheelbarrow. I know you wanted to get started earlier, but I figured it would be good for you guys to watch me work out, give you a better sense of what I'm all about. Sure. Hello, I'm Greg Lawrence, the creator of Kevin Spencer, the best and funniest show ever made for television. Every week we get thousands of letters of fan mail congratulating us on being fantastic and asking how exactly it is that week after week we continue to raise the bar of quality programming. At least I assume that's what the letters say. I never actually read them. Uh, excuse me, Your Excellency. I I'm sorry for interrupting, but here's your cappuccino and gold-plated Danish. Didn't I tell you to bow before you talked to me? Uh, I, there, there are so many new rules, I, I forgot. Well, maybe you'll remember when you're washing my fucking Bentley. Be gone! Coward! Some days I regret rescuing her from the burning orphanage. I give and I give and I give. Anyway, follow me and I'll give you a tour of the place. Decorating for the Christmas party? You, you told me I had to. I don't even know who the hell you are. Uh, Howard. I'm the audio engineer for the show. I I've worked here for quite a few years. It's strange that we've never met. Um, we have? Uh, quite a lot. Y you know, I have the band Pale AD. I asked you if our band could be in the show. Uh, you said yes. That was quite a while ago. No one cares. They're making a documentary about how good the show is and how great I am. Why don't you tag along with him and he'll introduce you to the director, Paul. After you've done that, Andrew. Howard? Sure. And after you've done that, finish up the decorating. I want this place to look more festive than Jim J. Bullock on a Mardi Gras bender. Okay, uh, by the way, the director's name is Dave? Dave Bigelow? <laughs> I don't care. Don't say anything bad about me. I'm serious. You badmouth me and I'll destroy your fucking home life. Hey, Dave. Uh, Greg wants you to show these guys around. Don't you mean His Excellency? <laughs> <laughs> the show's pretty much paint by numbers. I mean, we're not talking about award-winning, clever humor. So, in your opinion, the show isn't particularly funny? In my opinion, there's only so many ways to tell the same dick joke and it was wearing thin a long time ago. What about introducing new writers, reworking the creative, expanding the focus of the series? Sure. If Greg didn't spend half the budget on hookers and drugs and whatever else he has to have to fuel his massive ego. So who actually writes the show? The computer behind me. Let's face it, the show is pretty much just people drinking and swearing with the odd flash and nudity to give the impression that it's somehow risque. We've got all that shit on file, so the software pretty much just randomly stitches a series of offensive and unrelated scenes together, and voila, we've got a half hour of television. Watch this. Dick, asshole, shit, fuck, cocksucker, bunghole, berm, clam, bastard, prick, honeypot, Jesus H. God damn it, son of a bitch, titties. Scrotum! Bag licker, snapper, Johnson, fuckity fuck fuck dick fuck son of a whore ass face. So, if I want a typical Kevin Spencer scene in the family kitchen, I just hit the kitchen button. Program in family, and voila! Ah, shit! Shut up, fatty! Up yours, you useless drunk prick! I may be drunk and useless, but at least I ain't useless. That don't make no sense! Maybe it makes so much sense that it sounds like it doesn't. Has the show ever won any awards? <laughs> What's going on? The staff chipped in and set up the security system. We all have these necklaces with panic buttons. Code red. My guess is Greg's high and has one of the staff cornered. Happens about once a week. I didn't mean nothing by it. 
It was an accident. I, I didn't realize it was you behind me. Who the hell else could it be? Look at these lads. Behold my glorious pecs, my hair. Like there could ever be two of me. It'll, it'll never happen again. I swear. What now? Jeremy looked him in the eye. Right in the eye. Ah, Carlis. Stand back! We're gonna have to track him! Ah! When I first started working for Greg, he was nothing like he is now. Don't get me wrong, he was still an asshole, but it's like this. You've got your assholes, then you've got your king of the assholes. Well, in the hierarchy of assholes, Greg's the guy above the king. So why do you stay? Uh, look, I can't know. Uh, next question. I really... <laughs> when I say hot coffee, I mean hot! I've been with the show for a few years now. It's a job. Quite honestly, we keep hoping, I mean thinking, that the show isn't going to get renewed, but yes? Are you Lisa Rungi? What's going on? Just routine stuff. Looking into a missing person's report. Frank Burrell. Uh, he used to work here. He quit. Moved somewhere. Do you always work this late? Normally Greg only makes us work 15 or 16 hours a day. The other guys only have to work 14, but they have seniority. Is that why you got stuck staying late and decorating the office? No, no we, we like, like doing, doing this. this. It's an honor. We're happy to help out Greg whatever way he wants us to. So you replaced Frank Burrell. Did you ever meet him? Did the other staff ever talk about him? Why he left? He went to a happy place. <laughs> Everything's good. We're not supposed to talk about some things. Greg doesn't like it. What's going on? Nothing, Your Excellency. Who the hell are you? We're making the documentary. You hired us. Right. Hey, you guys want to smoke some crack and watch me lift weights? I really should finish decorating. I think we're going to call it a day. Fucking pussies. Hey, remember, tomorrow's Tuesday. Yay! What was that all about? Don't ask. So about the... Uh... Let me guess. Uh, tube top? <laughs> We've been putting up with this shit for a year or so. Greg figured the staff needed something to boost morale. <laughs> a lot of companies have casual Fridays, but uh, leave it up to a-hole to come up with tube top Tuesdays. <sighs> There seems to be a general air of dislike toward Greg. No one we have interviewed seems to be very happy about working here. If he lets you out, send help. What? I have a family. I haven't seen my children in three years. Help us. I like your tube top, Mike. I'm gonna start editing right away. I'll just take the tape there and the camera. And Mike, I'd like to see you in my office. Uh, I was just kidding. Um, my family's here, this is all I need. So now we just add the booze, the cigarettes, and surprise, surprise, another scene in a strip club with people getting drunk. After I finish my portion of the scene, it shifts over to the assembly department, then on to animation. The show has been described by some critics as morally reprehensible. You're a mother. Are you ever concerned that you may be contributing to a show that could be argued as having a profound contribution to the general moral decay of society? Not anymore. I've had to see through so many horrible things since I started here that now I'm just dead inside. It's like I don't have a soul anymore. Wash it again! This time wax it right. Love my car more than you love yourself! Tears won't save you! You better not cry in my fucking car. The salt of your misery ain't good for the finish. Everything going all right, fellas? Good, I'm about to head back to my office for some Valium and autoerotic asphyxiation. You guys want to come with? Uh, maybe. 
We still have some more interviews with the staff. First. Suit yourself, but don't hold your breath waiting for any sparkling insights from that pack of assholes. I make the show what it is. The staff are just a bunch of fucking trained monkeys. Oh, hey, everyone. Thumbs up on the effort. You're all doing grade A work. Can you explain what goes on in the assembly phase? Can you explain it out loud using words? You know, if you speak out loud on camera, you get paid as an actor. Easy money. How many words do I have to say to get paid? You just said enough. We've talked to your families. Uh, none of them have heard from you in years. Uh, We're happy here. What happened to your face? I, uh, it was, I, uh, I fell down skateboarding. It was a skateboarding accident. No one's in me. We should get back to work, guys. Watch him one hour. Hey, have you guys seen Mike? Why? He was supposed to do a voice session, but nobody can seem to find him. We have to do something. We can't do anything. He's everywhere. We can escape. Impossible. There's a way out, but we're gonna need time. We have to make sure Greg is distracted. The Christmas party. The place will be packed. Greg will be a mess. It won't work. His tolerance for booze and drugs isn't human. Then we've only got one shot at this. We have to work together to make sure he takes enough booze and drugs to pass out. I'm in. Me too. Let's get the rest of the staff in on it as well. If we work together, then maybe, just maybe, we can get out of this hellhole alive. Hit him! I don't want to. The pain will draw you closer together. Hit him or I'll shoot you! Just hit me. Get it over with. You hit like a fucking little girl. You know, if you were Japanese and you shamed yourself this much, you'd do the honorable thing and pick up the gun and kill yourself. Latte! Your, your latte, your excellency. Too slow! Greg Lawrence doesn't want it anymore! <laughs> Look at you. You're glorious. So perfect. You're a perfect man. Get me some whores! Lots of them! What's going... Quiet. There isn't much time. Get out while you can. Use any excuse. Get the police. Send help. He's insane. Insane in what way? People don't just quit this job. We all want to leave, but we know what happened to Frank and the others. Those detectives suspect something. Talk to them. Greg's too smart. They'll never get out of here. You're our only hope. I think you're overreacting. He's eccentric and a little volatile, granted, but I hardly think he's going to kidnap two detectives. At the risk of offending you, your staff seems quite unhappy, and frankly, some have accused you of horrific abuse. You think the people that mix Michelangelo's paint didn't sometimes hate him? That, do you think everyone who follows Jesus Christ is happy about all the rules all the time? Are you comparing yourself to Christ? Not in the global I created the universe sense, but comedy, yeah, you could say I'm the Jesus Christ of comedy, sent forth to lead the people to the promised land of humor. Those detectives that have been around, they seem to think you may have been involved in the disappearance of one or more of your former employees. Hypothetically speaking, let's say I did murder them because they dared to question my genius. Sorry to interrupt, Your Excellency, but the Comedy Network just phoned. 
They're a little worried that we're 700% over budget and we haven't even finished the first episode of the season. Heretics. Have my chopper fueled and ready in 10 minutes and call a staff meeting so we can do the secret Santa. Sorry, fellas, I got a situation here. I'd invite you to come along, but the chopper only seats eight, and I don't travel without my whores. I'm going to a meeting for the next couple of hours. Christmas parties tonight. I want this place decorated properly. Everyone's got their secret Santa name. Same rules as last year. $500 minimum on the gift. Oh, and my DNA regeneration machine isn't up running yet, so forget what they said on the invites. The Beatles aren't going to be playing the party. Tell that audio guy, Mark. Uh, um, it's Howard? Yeah, whoever. Tell him his band is playing. Oh, and in case any of you haven't figured it out for yourselves yet, those staff flu shots I ordered, well, that was a sham. It wasn't a needle, it was a small implant of plastic explosives placed beside your spinal cord and your neck. You stay in the building and we're cool. Anyone wanders out of signal range and your head will explode like a watermelon dropped from a 10-story building. Excellency? Of course. Canadian television knows which side its bread is buttered on. Whole fucking country is riding my coattails. Back to the office? Yeah, I've got a party to go to. And for the record, if you ever speak to me again without being spoken to first, the last thing you will ever see is me eating your still beating heart after I carve it out of your fucking insolent chest. Why? Send help! Come with us! We can't! We'll die! Hurry, for God's sakes, hurry! Thomason, you said there was a way out of here. Now's the time. We'll die. You saw what just happened. Our only hope is that the two detectives realize what's going on and send help. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. The two detectives are dead, man. I saw their bodies in the utility closet. Oh, that's just perfect. Why the hell didn't you say anything earlier? I was going to, but then I got the thing about hot dogs, hot dogs, hot dogs. Well, you know. We have to kill him. How? He's too huge and powerful, mentally and physically. Like Dave suggested earlier, everyone pretends they're having a good time at the party, and we keep pumping him full of drugs and alcohol. And sooner or later, he's got to go down. When he passes out, we kill him. Then what? Then we send for help. The explosives in our head won't detonate as long as we stay here. With Greg out of the way, we can get someone in here to disable them, then walk away. If he suspects something, he'll kill us. He'll kill us all eventually anyway. I'm in. Okay, let's do I'm it. In. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in. Me too. Okay, I'm in. Okay, me too.
It's not working. We're almost out of drugs and the only booze left is beer. He can drink beer forever. Wait a minute. One of the guys in Howard's band is diabetic. So? Ah, <gasps> insulin, a syringe full and Greg's heart stops. It's worth a shot. What do you mean we're out of drugs? This is a party. Take this. What is it? Uh, some new designer drug. All the cool people in Europe are doing it. There are no cool people in Europe. Give me that. I'm Greg Lawrence! I made you what you- I am the king! Merry Christmas, asshole! Hey, that looks like fun!